Hello guys, welcome back to Tax Writers and the 11th video of the Applied Numerical Computing series. In this episode, we want to have a short discussion on the importance of numerical computing, why it matters, and in general, generally speaking, why we need numerical methods to solve ordinary or partial differential equations. So let's discuss it a bit. So as you saw in uh, you know the example that I solved for SimPy, which was actually this this notebook. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, you can you know click on the top, the link on the top of the video and watch it again. But uh, you know what we did in that episode uh, was actually deriving uh, a mathematical equation for you know the diffusion of oxygen through a cell dollar construct, and then we solved it analytically to derive the maximum diffusion depth. And that was feasible. What matters here, what is very important and you should take notice is, uh, and you should pay attention to, is actually, uh, you know, the, that was, the, the equation was solvable analytically. So we performed some integration on both sides. I don't want to go through, through that again, but, you know, the equation was simple that allowed us, this simplicity allowed us to do that. But in reality, in science and engineering, when you you know when you deal with with models, you know mathematical models that are derived from the physical phenomena, the equations are not as simple as this. So you cannot solve them analytically. This is where numerical computing comes into play. For example, I just want to show you one quick example. This is a sort of transient diffusion in 2D space. So you can just imagine that, uh, I, I can show you that, for example, we want to solve something like that is in, the, in 2D domain, and we ha we put something like with, with higher temperature or higher concentration inside this domain, and it starts to, you know, diff the, the materials or the temperature or whatsoever starts to diffuse toward the space. So this is what what can be modeled with this equation. So the diffusion, diffusion coefficient, and the U is, for example, the, the quantity of interest here can be temperature, can be the, the concentration whatsoever, can be modeled this, using this equation. And as you can, can see, this equation cannot be solved by, different, by, by, by integrating both sides. And as a result, we need another technique to solve it. And this technique is called numerical computing. We can solve it numerically, and this is what we are we are going to talk in in the you know upcoming uh, videos that we want to cover. For example, finite difference method for that, as well as finite element method, this kind of stuff. But the core idea is we discretize it in time and space. So. In this domain, for example, we start to see that what happens in, for example. And on this point, that what happens here, what happens here, and then, you know, in a discrete space instead of continuous space. And then we do that for multiple times because we want to also see what happens through time. So this is actually what, what the technique is all about, what the technique will, how the technique works. And for example here, I don't want to go to, to the details at this moment, but for this one, the numerical discretization form in a first order of accuracy these are the topics, these are the terms that we'll discuss in details later. But if it looks like this, and this is quite simple, you will see. And then when you implement is implemented it in Python or you know any other language, in this case it is in Python, you can see that yeah, it, it, the, the program is not complex. Now you know Python. It, we have covered it, the Python concepts and also NumPy concepts in previous videos of this series. But uh, yeah. By implementing that, you see that, yeah, we can plot, we can solve the equation, although it was not solvable analytically, we can solve it numerically, and we can have the contour, the profile, the diffusion profile, or the temperature profile over time. And we can see how, the, 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 for example, the temperature field evolves eventually. So this is actually the result. And, um, yeah, so... Mostly, when we deal with these kind of systems, with these kind of models in science and engineering, they cannot be solved analytically. 
And the kind of examples, I will, I will put the link of this uh, video in the description. This is an, uh, the video that I created for a course. But I don't want to go for this. This is related to the mathematics and mass transfer. But, uh, you know, this is a kind of uh, equation that you see that it has the, the, the transient part, the temporal evolution, the diffusion part, that how the, the the quantity of interest diffuses through the space, how it gets convected by a fluid flow, for example, by a velocity field V, and also how it reacts with, with the surrounding environment, how different kind of sources we can have, like a source of energy or source, source of heat, and this kind of stuff. And, you know, there are lots of examples for this equation like heat transfer in solids or you know mass transfer and corrosion processes you can see that the equation is exactly the same and also the Floyd flow equation famous Navier-Stokes but all these things that are that can be used to model various phenomena cannot be solved analytically and they are very complex in terms of you know solution we cannot solve them by hand neither by num numpy or simpy so we need to use numerical computing for that and then this is, you know, this is the technique that lots of other simulation programs, simulation software, whether they are commercial or free, uh, free and open source, they use these techniques to solve things. And I want to show you how these things can be used in, in reality. For example, I have a very simple simulation code here, Energy 2D, to, to visualize the stuff. I can show you that yeah this this is actually how these techniques can be used and it can be employed in action to to model things and there are a bunch of examples here you can download energy 2d and run the examples yourself so sorry what i want to show you here for example is a similar thing for you know diffusion in, in space that is that was actually what i showed you through, through the example so this is this example is uh, is just this equation that i described before but yeah let's run it and see what happens so uh, of course without this uh, heat flux line so we have one source of heat here one source here so this is zero you know a cold source and a hot source and then they we put them together and then they start to you know diff the, the, the temperature starts to diffuse because they you know the, 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 the heat is getting exposed to the, the to the dome and starts to spread and then you can see that by solving the equation, we can plot what happens eventually for, for this domain. And this is, uh, this is, you know, sort of example. And in this course, we are going to see how we can do this uh, ourselves, how we can write programs that, 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 that do this. This is quite simple because it's, uh, and this is crucial because when you start to, you know, model things yourself, build your own mathematical models, then you need to, programs that can solve them. So you cannot use commercial tools or, you know, the tools that have uh, pre-built models to, to solve your own models. So this is quite important to, to know the basics of numerical techniques. And this is why we are going to do that. And also when you face a problem, it's important that you know how this, the program solves these things. And you will see that it is very, very simple. And for example, uh, you know, we can go to another sample like comparing force convection and conduction. Yeah, this is, uh, when uh, you know we have just a diffusion here so a source term again in this case in you know, a 50 centigrade and then we have diffusion only and diffusion and convection so we put a fan there it's a sort of you know ex exposing uh, convection exposing velocity and you see that in this case it dissipates it spreads through the space uniformly but in this case it, it gets it gets convected because there is a velocity field that pushes it that help that you know make it move but uh yeah we can also for example uh let's uh decrease the the velocity and you can see now you sh you we we will see that yeah by decreasing the velocity now it moves with a slower speed and the dissipation occurs uh you know slower but the same thing here and then, uh, you know, similar to this, uh, the Floyd dynamics for, for, you know, for different velocities, we have still a source, you, you remember from the equation. So here, uh, these are actually this one, this, this, the last term in the equation. So this, this term, which was actually the reaction. 
So the source of each, for example, of the heat in this case, and the velocity v. So we apply different velocities to the equation, and it has the diffusion, the, uh, because it diffuses, and also the source, so each sort of reaction and the source, and at, at the same time the convection. And in order to solve this, you can see that yeah, this, this helps us to visualize the effect of uh, of of the velocity of the convection at different speeds. For example, you you see you can see that how it takes how long it takes to to for the heat to reach here you know this one has started it's not started yet and then here yeah still yeah and i know the heat the, the temperature reached the, the, the heat wave sort of reached the, the, this this point this region so in order to to perform this kind of assessment this kind of investigation in action you need to know numerical methods and in actually the reason is i explain it the reason is those equations, the equation, the, this equation, the reaction diffusion convection equation cannot be solved analytically. So you need uh, numerical techniques in order to solve them. And yeah, this is why numerical computing matters. Oh, okay, it says that it's getting overloaded, so I stop it. But yeah, this is, you know, actually. Uh, uh, the reason behind the importance of numerical computing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that again, the discussion was useful for you to understand the, the, the logic behind the, the, this, this importance that, you know, the reason that we started this series and the reason that, yeah, this matters a lot for scientific computing and also for computing modeling and simulation. So from the next videos, we will start to, to discuss the concepts, the, the mathematical concepts and also implementation details. And then, uh, yeah, you will see how it works in action. See you later. Bye.